Hi guys, today I'll show you how to create this really popular image cloud effect using Cavalry. Now I'll keep it super simple so even if you've never used Cavalry and you're coming from After Effects, you can easily follow along. So we're inside Cavalry and the first thing we're going to do is just Alt-Left click on our rectangle tool. This creates a rectangle in the center of our composition. Now if you're coming from After Effects, this might seem a little bit weird because the layers and the attributes are separate. If we create another rectangle, oh, sorry, another star for example, you can see both of our layers are getting loaded into the attribute editor. Now, if at some point we just want to see one layer, we can just alt and double click the layer and this will delete every other layer from the attribute editor. All right, we'll delete our star shape and group our rectangle by hitting Control or Command G. Now we can use this toolbox right here to create a duplicator and this will duplicate our shape according to some pattern. For example, now we chose a grid, but what we need for our animation is a point distribution. This will put all the layers right on top of each other. For our example, we'll just use 10 layers. So since we want our rectangles to move from the left to the right of the screen, let's start by keyframing the X position. So we'll go to shape position, scrub to the left and create a keyframe. And then maybe at frame 180, we'll scrub to the right and it will automatically create another keyframe. So now we'll have 10 rectangles that are moving from the left to the right at exactly the same spot. If you want to make this a little bit more interesting, we can give them a shape time offset. So we'll right click down here add behavior and then we can add a stagger behavior. Now to actually see what we're doing, we're going to come into our rectangle shape and give this a smaller size, maybe 0.2. A quick little tip, if you want to change both values of a given parameter, for example, the scale, you can just hit Alt and Enter and this will apply the value to both the X and the Y parameter. Now we'll go into our stagger and maybe we'll stagger this by negative 70. And as you can see, we have 10 rectangles that move from left to the right in a staggered manner. All right, so the first thing we want to achieve is to give each of our rectangles a random Y position. We can come in here, Alt, double click our rectangle layer and then we can right click on the position property and behavior and then add a random behavior. Now we just want to apply this to the Y position so we can click on Y. This random behavior will give each of our rectangles a different value between in this case 0 and 10. Now we want to exaggerate this a little bit and go with maybe negative 400 to 400. A quick little workflow tip, you can take any property and just drag it onto another one. So now these two are connected. So when I change one value, the second one will update. Now I can just right click on the maximum and add an expression. And here I can just type in multiply by negative one. So what this will do, it will just mirror our minimum and just turn it positive. So now we scrub this minimum will have the exact same amount in the positive range. This is really handy for iterating quickly. You don't have to do this, but it's just a nice little workflow tip. All right, so let's set this to negative 400, for example. Now we have a bunch of rectangles that have different heights. Okay, that's nice, but we want our rectangles to start at roughly the same Y position. As they move towards the center of the screen, we want them to spread out. And as they continue towards the right, we want them to converge again. So for this, we can use a fall off. So we'll alt double click this layer and go to fall offs, right click and add fall off. And we'll just start by dragging our fall offs to the top of the layers panel so we can see what's going on. We can make this bigger and immediately you can see what's happening. Outside of this fall off range, our random behavior is not being applied. So the Y position is zero. As our rectangles move into this fall off range, they move towards their designated Y location. And as they move out, they converge towards a Y of zero again. What's really cool about fall offs is that you can change the fall off graph here. 
And what I would like to do is not to have them all start at zero, which is down here, but already have them start a little bit spread apart. So I can just move this up here and this will give each of the rectangles a percentage of their designated Y position right from the start. So as you can see here, they start sort of spread apart and then they move apart from another and then they converge again. All right, this is cool, but now we need to do the same thing with the scale as well. So we'll come into our rectangle shape and where it says scale, we'll right click, add behavior and add a random behavior. Now, this now covers the entire screen because we have really big values, but we'll go for maybe something like one, two, two. This will give each of our rectangles a random scale between one and two. Again, we can come in here, click fall off, right click, and add a fall off. Then we'll drag it on top of our layer stack so we can see it in the scene window and we'll make it a little bit bigger. As you can see, our rectangles disappear when they're outside of the fall off range because they'll get a scale of zero and as they move inside of the fall off, they'll get a scale between one and two and then as they move out, they disappear again. One more thing I would like to change here is to introduce a bit of variation on the Y axis. So I'll come into my duplicator and add a behavior noise to our shape position Y. What this will do is give this a semi-random oscillating value between these two values. So I'll do the same thing as before. I'll drag this value onto this one. Make sure to add a multiply by negative one expression here. And then I can quickly try out some values, maybe negative 40. Let's see what this looks like. Maybe let's try th something a little bit more drastic, maybe negative 80. And I already like this. This is just a really small touch, but it makes them just move a little bit. All right, so the next step is to fill each of our rectangles with an image. If you have the Calvary Pro version, this is really simple. But even if you have the free version, it just takes a couple of seconds. I'll show you both right now, but as always, you can just click the timestamp to see the one you're interested in. All right, so if you have the Pro version of Calvary, this is really simple because you can right click and import an image smart folder. For this, you'll just select your image folder. After importing the smart folder, we can just drag it into a scene window. This will create three layers for us, a canvas, a shader, and our image smart folder. As we're using the rectangles themselves as containers for our images, we don't need an extra canvas. So we can just right click our shader and set it to unparent. And then we can delete our canvas and our images will also disappear. Now we can just double click our rectangle shape, go to fill, and then just drag and drop our shader in there. Set this to auto index and we're basically done. One thing we still might want to change since those are all portrait images is to give our rectangles a little bit more height so they fit the canvas nicely. If you don't have a Cavalry Pro subscription, this will take a little bit of manual labor, but it's still really quick. You'll double click on your asset window and select your images. To keep things organized, we're just going to control or command G our entire layer stack and we'll call this image cloud. The next thing we need to do is to create an asset array. For this, we're gonna hit command or control full stop or we can just click on this little plus icon right here and type in asset array. And now we'll need nine additional slots and in here we can just drag our images. So this is a little bit more manual labor than using the image smart folder, but it's still really fast. Just takes a couple of seconds. And of course, if you want to change images, it's not quite as convenient as with an image smart folder, but for the free version, it's still quite good. Okay, this asset array is basically just storing the path to our images. So we still need a shader for a rectangle. So we'll alt double click a rectangle go to fill, right click, add shader, and then create an image shader. Then we can alt left click on our image shader, 
and where it says file, we'll just drag in our asset array. So this will reference our images dynamically and give each rectangle a separate image. And that's all you need to do. Now, if you skip the previous step, the only other thing we did was we went inside of the rectangle shape here, and then we just gave this a little bit of a height since the images are all in portrait mode. Once you have a system like this in place, it's really simple to make changes. So the first thing I might want to do is to change the stagger here. This will just give the images more offset. So maybe I'll crank this up to negative 120 and you can instantly see the difference. Now, of course, you can change each and every single parameter. You can play with the position, maybe make this 800 or 700 for example you can change the scale by having the random scale go from one to four maybe you can change your noise you can for example say it's negative 50 instead of negative 100 and see how that looks and what's really cool about this is that it's just using two keyframes to just affect the position of one of our shapes and of course you can easily change this to make it longer for example or you can give this some easing by hitting shift one for example to give the animation a totally different feel of course you can always come into the duplicator and increase your count maybe to 30 pictures instead of 10 and then you might want to adjust the scale back to something smaller maybe 0.5 and 1 and this is really the power of procedural setups. Once you have a system like this in place, you can easily make changes and react to client feedback, and it makes it super simple and fun to iterate. I'm not gonna spend too much time fine tuning this because that's really up to you guys. All right guys, that's it for the tutorial. If you have any ideas for upcoming videos that you would like to see, make sure to leave them in the comments. Take care.